Take a hit. Okay, should be good to go. Thanks. Great, thank you. Hi, how are you? Hey, good, how are you? Good, thanks. Well, thank you again for taking the time to speak with me today. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wanted to get started asking about the development of the documentary and maybe how you met Memphis and his family and what that interest, uh, what that interest was uh, for you as a filmmaker to really uh, tell his story in a film. Over. Sure. Um, so uh, it's a bit of a long story how I met him. Um, he and I had both been hired um, to work on set outside Austin, uh, like quite a few years ago uh, for this under budgeted scripted Christmas film. Um, and we were, uh, we were shooting overnights and everyone on set was kind of like miserable and tired. Um, and Memphis was very high energy. He was, he was pretty amped to be there. And he was just kind of going around, you know, chatting with people and talking about film and everything. And so um, he was a very memorable presence for me. Um, I ended up, um, well, so a few days into this shoot um, in front of everyone under pretty confusing circumstances, um, Memphis was fired. And um, that was pretty shocking for me. And I, I was just, I was confused about why it happened and what, what the circumstances were. So I ended up reaching out to him afterwards. Um, and I learned that he had been vlogging about his experiences for nearly a decade at that point. Um, and he had this desire to, to what he called share his story. Um, and so we kind of, we talked about it and, and I asked if um, we could kind of begin this filmmaking journey. Mm -hmm. And overall, I swear that this was your um, feature film directorial debut. So I wanted to ask about that experience for you as well as a filmmaker and making this um, as your first feature and as a director and just your overall experiences and approaching um, making the film as a director. Yeah, um, it, it was a pretty exploratory process in making the film. Um, uh, I don't think anyone, including myself, had any idea that it was going to extend for as long as it did. And so maybe that's all I can say about being a first time feature director, uh, especially in documentaries. It's, it's just gonna take way, way longer than you ever think. Um, or that was my experience. But um, uh, yeah, it was exploratory. And so, um, I'm so sorry, I'm blanking on what the question was. Just your overall experience um, as a director uh, while making the documentary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, Memphis at the beginning of this project was not famous. He, there was no like very special skill that we were following. It wasn't like he was a celebrity or an amazing chef or something. He was just this guy who I really like resonated with as I got to know him more and more. Um, and I think that if I were deeper in my filmmaking career, I might have kind of gone, is there a story here? Who's going to be the audience for this? A lot of the logistical questions. And instead, uh, I really wasn't thinking about any of that. I thought, here's this person who I think deserves a wider audience, who I think people would be really interested to follow and get to know. Um, and so I'm kind of, I'm pleased with my naivete in that process because um, because I think it, it turned into a pretty topsy-turvy uh, story that I'm, I'm proud to share. And during the production for the film, what was your experience like of really getting to know Memphis and his family better and really figuring out how much you wanted to show from maybe each of their perspectives and just really getting to know and work with them on real production? Yeah. It was a goal from the beginning that this was going to be a film to whatever degree was possible to, to be told through Memphis's eyes. Um, so um, we were intentionally not featuring the parents too heavily, featuring friends too heavily. Um, um, yeah, we just wanted to show up and let Memphis guide it. Um, but as we got to know um, Memphis's parents, they began, you know, maybe a little hesitant with the process, but. Um, but really bought in and and um, I'm grateful to Memphis for allowing us to be present for so long because because throughout the film you really do see him 
evolve and he was open to letting us sort of be present for each of those transitions that he goes through over the years that we filmed. And also, I wanted to ask about being one of the cinematographers on the film as well and what that experience was like for you to really figure it out how you wanted to visually shoot the film as well. Yeah, um, uh, the, the um, primary piece of that is that it was cheaper. Um, because I didn't have to hire someone. Um, but um, uh, we really tried to maintain like a pretty naturalistic approach to um, telling Memphis's story. Um, and I think because he's so unpredictable, he can be impulsive and he's, he'll, he'll make really big moves pretty quickly. Um, I knew that this was not a situation in which we were gonna be able to do a lot of lockdown shooting, um, you know, classically lit anything. It was like, we have the camera and wherever Memphis goes, we're just gonna be right behind him. Um, so I, I think the, the impulsivity of everything really informed the cinematography more than anything else. And also, I uh, saw you were one of the producers on the film as well. And I wanted to ask about that experience as well and really balancing the producing with directing and what that experience was like um, for this type of thing. Yeah, I think that's, just a reality, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I think that's just a reality of um, making an independent documentary um, uh, is that especially in the early years, I mean, this this took seven years in total and, and in the early years, you don't necessarily have a lot of buy-in, you don't have money. And so um, it was a hustle and, and luckily I was just, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, luckily I was just able to collaborate with good friends who believed in this project, able to collaborate with these characters who who didn't um, demand very much of us. I mean, it, um, it was collaborative in process. We really showed up each time um, and they let us in. Um, and so um, the producing aspect has really transformed um, uh, since we got into South by, um, you know, cobbling together financing, um, et cetera. It's become quite a bit more complicated. And speaking of South by, I was about to ask about that experience as well, and with uh, um, Memphis and his family living in Austin, well, in Texas as well, and just in general, and what that experience been like of being able to bring the film there and premiere there. Yeah, it's really special for me to be able to play at South by, besides the fact that it's such an amazing festival. Um, uh, a fun fact here is that it was the very first frame of footage I ever shot for this film was of Memphis at South by um, volunteering, which is something that he loved to do every year when he lived there. So um, so I've actually never had a pass. I've never really been able to experience the festival outside of just um, filming Memphis. So I'm really excited to go. Um, I'm hoping it's gonna be an amazing experience for Memphis. Uh, his parents are gonna be there. Um, so it should be a real homecoming and I'm, I'm uh, very excited that this is our premiere. Mm -hmm. And also what was the experience like of editing the film and really putting the final version of the film together, um, especially with the pandemic the last few years, did that maybe influence or affect the editing or what was that experience like as well over and over? The edit was very long and very complex, partially because of the exploratory nature of our shoot. Um, the story was constantly changing. Memphis uh, would go from one thing to the next, and we would need to find a way for both of those things to exist in the film in a way that was accessible and made sense, um, and that always followed this singular through line of his coming of age and, and discovering new things about himself and, and carving kind of an independent path. Um, so uh, since we shot over five years, um, the edit was was pretty complicated, but we ultimately were able to you know, put something together that I think lands for an audience. Um, luckily, the pandemic actually didn't interrupt too much. Um, we were complete uh, with production. So um, at that point, it was just, we were locked in our houses and I guess that's the ideal scenario for editing. Yeah. And what do you hope that audiences uh, who see the film, especially at South Boy, can really take away? And if people don't really know much about um, like Memphis's um, condition or um, cerebral palsy, um, what's that message that you hope that people can take away from it as well? Um, for me, the message has very little to do with uh, his cerebral palsy. Um, it's, of course, a part of the story. 
um, in a lot of ways, but it, um, but the story itself is, is really a universal story about um, this person pursuing um, life and love and work and independence um, as he grows up. And so um, I don't think there's one way to read the film. Um, a lot of people take away different things. Some people see it as more political uh, about the way Texas doesn't support people with disabilities, you know, anywhere near adequately. Uh, others really um, zero in on kind of a more personal account of, of this person growing up. Um, I, I hope that it's just an opportunity for um, audiences to meet someone who under different circumstances, they may not have a, have a chance to sort of understand the richness of his life and, and of his ambitions and um, all, you know, just his complete personhood. Yeah, I think that was me, Lee, but thank you again for taking the time out to speak with me. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Karen. You're welcome. Thanks again. Take care. Bye. Bye.